the weak nature of the Florida Democratic Party should lend itself to more of a movement shakeup. Uh, the problem is that we are operating in the Jim Crow South. So people now still have a sense of reluctance that we still have to take these incremental steps towards success. And it scares me as a Floridian uh, because when you look at the movement behind Stacey Abrams in Georgia, this was a two to three year process in which here's a person who stakes their claim. Their last attempt was uh, Jimmy Carter's grandson, right? That was That's who they ran for governor, was that kind of last ditch, let's try to find the name attached to the establishment and run them in hopes of restoring the Democratic prominence of Georgia, and they failed. So what does the Democratic establishment in Georgia say? Well, if that didn't work, let's try something radically different. <laughs> let's take somebody who's the head of our Democratic caucus in the House, who's shown natural leadership, and put her in a position to now be governor of the state of Georgia. Now, of course, there's pushback. There's still establishment candidates, but there's still a momentum around that. Fast forward to Florida, and if I were to give you just resumes A, B, and C, A, B, C, and D of the four Democratic candidates without putting a color or name attached to them, from a pure who's the better person to run based on uh, aptitude, yeah. qualifications, time in office, progressive gravitas, connections, Rolodex, the whole nine yards, it would be one person, and that would be Mayor Gillum, right? But because of his age, because of his race, and because we are in the Jim Crow South, there is still this overarching reluctance for fundamental change that he's too progressive or he's running on too left of a, of a thing. He's, he's saying crazy things like we should restore the rights of 1.5 million people who've, who've served their time. You know, he's, he's saying these wild things like we should have expanded Medicaid and cover the 800,000 people who fall uh, victim to, to what we call the donor hole in Florida where they can't, uh, they're too poor, uh, too rich for Medicaid, but too poor to afford uh, what's out there uh, in the insurance universe. You know, it's, it's, it's a problem. It's a problem that we're ultimately trying to figure out how do we best correct that uh, from an organizational uh, standpoint through SWAG, through New FM, and through our desire to want to see fundamental change uh, here in the state of Florida, because we understand if, if we could shift Florida, you know, if, if when you look at the top four states in terms of population, California, Florida, Texas, and New York, two out of those four uh, have, have at least uh, strong progressive ties and the ability for organizations like ours to kind of move the politics in those states. There's been a responsiveness from grassroots organizations like New Florida Majority, like uh, what we're trying to do with SWAG. But nationally, when you think about New Virginia Majority, when you think about uh, the Ohio Organizing Collaborative and, and uh, you know, Step Up Louisiana and some of these other very, very grassroots centered organizations that are out here trying to be responsive to the needs uh, the needs of the community, but then also translate that to these national parties and organizations. Um, and 2016 was kind of, in my opinion, the tipping point, right? Was we've kind of gone along to get along. We've convinced you for decades that if you vote for our person, that, uh, that at least we're better than the alternative. And people are now saying that we don't want better than the alternative. We want actual responsiveness. We want you running on a platform that uh, that speaks to helping the larger community. And so when you look at some of the wins in the last year and a half since the 2016 election, whether it's uh, Woodfin in Birmingham, Alabama, or Lumumba in Jackson, Mississippi, or even looking at the Doug Jones election for the U.S. Senate, uh, that was a grassroots movement. The Democratic Party, of course, wants to take uh, 
you know, take credit for that. But we're talking about a large scale mass mobilization of local community folks who said enough is enough, who said, all right, we're going to make sure that we mobilize black women uh, more than we've done in the past. We're going to make sure that we get an overperformance from this community has been left out of Alabama electoral politics in the age of Jim Crow, right? And we're going to overperform. And it was it was odd to see the Democratic Party try to take uh, credit for a guy like Doug Jones outperforming President Obama. We're not going to get where we need to go with who with who we got, you know, we have to have outward facing um, movements, organizations that are um, building power and getting us to the kind of scale um, that we need to enact the kind of changes that we're talking about.